So Brandon's gonna um, show us some of the props they have on display here this year. Yeah, I'm just going to talk you guys through some of the things that are here in the showcase. Um, we all spend some time trying to pick and choose a variety of items to bring out here. Obviously, there's there fans no of... In the exhibit hall. Please walk to your destination. Don't run. Stop running, Brandon. There's fans of all different genres here and, and all different films, so we try to really bring a selection of, of different items. Um, and obviously, we haven't repeated anything from last year. We wanted to bring new material. So the first one we've got here is Vincent from The Black Hole. Uh, it's a model miniature of Vincent. We had Maximilian out last year, which was very well received. A lot of attention on that, so we was thought this would be a good one to bring. The same scale? It was the same scale, yeah, which which is cool. Um, we've also got the old Bob figure, so we've we've got the three for the set, which is pretty neat. Um, so Vincent, we've got a, a Star Trek Next Generation tricorder here. Uh, we had Mike Moore of HMS stop by yesterday, who who built many of the Star Trek props, including these tricorders, and he was explaining to us some of the details and how they work, how they were constructed, how they were modified from season to season. So that was really cool. Uh, we've got a Cronin mask from the first Hellboy film, another popular one, a great character, and there were a number of different styles of masks in the film, but this is one of the key styles that's, that's featured heavily. Uh, down here, you see that? Can you guys see? Down here, we have a piece from ADI, Amalgamated Dynamics Incorporated, uh, which has not really been seen before. We're actually working with ADI exclusively to present a collection of their material to the market, which we'll be offering out in the first week of August. Uh, things from films like Alien 3, Alien Resurrection, Starship Troopers, Jumanji, Evolution, uh, really just a sample of the films that they've worked on over their 20-year their history. Um, That's not going to be on your website? That will be on the website, yeah, in the, in the first week of August. And it's fixed pricing. It's not That's auction. right. No, it's not an auction. It'll be fixed pricing, as our sales always are. And uh, it's, it's just a great collection of material from different films that hasn't really been seen before. This particular piece was created for Alien 3, and it was built for a shot in the film that's an x-ray, where you basically see an x-ray of uh, a face hugger on someone's face. So they had to do different levels of the x-ray, and this is the, the skeletal level, basically the bones of the face hugger. And it's just a really cool, interesting, sort of unique display piece, we think. Um, so that's that. There's a few other ADI pieces that are here in the cases, which we'll talk you through also. This is not one, this is a different piece, but this is an original stop-motion skeleton of a Deadite character from Army of Darkness, uh, Sam Raimi's film. And he was actually built out of an off-the-shelf kit. There are different types of joints in the armature. There's some ball and socket joints, which are a little more precise than the simple wire joints that are in some of the smaller areas, like the hands. Um, stop-motion, sort of a dying art, always a lot of interest in that, so we thought that would be a good one. Down here we have a great example of work from Rick Baker's Cinevation Studios. Uh, this is an original puppet of the, the George Gremlin from Gremlins 2. Uh, this guy is in remarkable condition considering the age. He has had a little bit of attention. He's, he's been sealed and had minor restoration work done. Uh, but overall this was one of the nicer pieces that, that we had, one of the, the really good condition puppets. Um, and this is what we would call a throw-around puppet. It's basically that there's no hole in the bottom for a puppeteer's hand to go in. It's a, it's a full body thing and the way they would use those, the actors would kind of hold it and shake it around and it's basically a complete character without any kind of mechanisms visible that you can film from any angle. So there's simple joints in the arms uh, that they kind of allow it to flop around but no real mechanisms. But just, just a great example of a, a full body gremlin puppet. Uh, over here we have Batman Sonar Cow from, from Batman and Robin. Uh, this is just a great example of a comic related piece of Batman's cowl, obviously very recognizable. Um, what can I say about Batman's cowl? <laughs> Foam latex uh, in remarkable condition and just a nice piece. Starting on the right side of the case, on the top here we have Doc Ock's claw from Spider-Man 2. Uh, Doc Ock played by Alfred Molina of Raiders fame. Um, he basically has four of these claws that grow out of his back in the film that he wreaks havoc and destruction with, and this is one of them. This is one of many, I'm sure, that were made for the production, but it's an original and a really nice example of it. You can see the, the metal has been weathered here, various techniques, and uh, yeah, just another nice looking piece. We knew this would be big with the comic crowd. We figured comic fans would appreciate that one. Down here, we've got a couple more pieces from the ADI collection. Uh, this is the Alien Queen's crown. 
This was off of a quarter scale rod puppet. They basically built interchangeable crowns for when the, the queen is damaged after fighting later in the film. Uh, this piece is made out of fiberglass with a foam latex bit at the front here. It doesn't have the head coming out, it's just the crown portion, but instantly recognizable to any fans of the Alien series franchise. Um, and with this piece, we've had a custom display base made for it. It's got the logo on there, it lights up, so you can turn the lights on and off. And it just presents the piece in, in a way that, you know, allows you to appreciate it more than you would if it was just laying on the shelf there. So do you guys do custom displays like that? Uh, we will do those, yeah. Typically what we've done out of the LA office is the acrylic displays, which are designed to be hung on walls. This is something different that we're just getting into, basically a tabletop display. But yeah, always happy to talk to collectors if, if anyone has needs for that kind of work. Um, and over here, this one, this is the Queen's Fetus from Alien 3. This is actually seen in the film in another x-ray, an x-ray of, of Ripley, where they examine her to find out that she actually has the Queen inside of her, which obviously affects the, the finale of the film when she dives into the lava. Um, but this piece is made out of a, a urethane, sort of a flexible, smooth-on urethane. And it's, it's cool because it was also seen on the Alien 3 poster and then on the cover of the DVD box set, the Adrian, Alien Quadrilogy. Um, so it's, it's sort of a recognizable image and we've got it tilted up at a 45 degree angle and again just a, a way for people to see it a little better. Here we have another piece from our exclusive presentation of ADI's material. This is an alien egg, obviously, which was created for the fourth film in the series, Alien Resurrection, and then reused in AVP, the first AVP film. Uh, it's, it's made out of a dense rubber. There are wires in the flaps here that allow it to be posed in the open or closed position. Um, there's a slit in the backside where a puppeteer could have slid his hand in to puppeteer a face hugger. And it's still got lots of slime and, and uh, different gels and things that were used inside to make it look alive. So uh, it's, it's a nice example. We've got a few of these, which again will be offered out in the first week of August. Up here on top of the case, we have another example of Rick Baker's work. This is one of the melting Gremlin puppets from Gremlins 2. Uh, this one we brought out because it's just a great looking piece. It's very visual and it's had a lot of attention up there on, on top of the case. Uh, there's an interesting story behind this one. This was painted for the film originally by Brian Penicus, a uh, master painter on the film. And it was recently restored, uh, had light restoration work done, some touch-ups, also by Brian. So it was, it was a lot of fun for him to go back 20 years later and revisit the same piece. And he actually told us a great story that during production, uh, Rick always loved the melting gremlins. And he came around, and he was looking at all of them, and he said that this particular gremlin was his favorite out of all the puppets they created for Gremlins 2. So, kind of cool. So has it been, like, coated with something to preserve it? It has, yeah. When they filmed them, they slimed them up with, I don't know what the product is, but they slimed them with something so that they appear wet. And if you look at the movie, you can see that. Now, when we got them 20 years later, all of that had long dried out, obviously, and they had sort of a different appearance. So sealing them does two things. One, it brings them back to the way they look on screen. Two, it preserves them better for the future. So it's, it's a semi-gloss acrylic sealant that's on there that it will just help it uh, survive for years to come.